So in this video, we're going to show how to use the definition of the derivative that you see right here to determine the derivative of this function. This function is a rational function. It's a polynomial over a polynomial. Uh, we are not yet in a spot where we know the quotient rule or the chain rule. For those of you a little further into your calculus course, using those rules is far more efficient than what you're going to see done in this video. This would be appropriate to watch if you're early in your calculus course, you've only learned the definition of the derivative, you haven't learned those shortcuts. Let's go ahead and show how the definition would find this derivative. So I have my definition in this upper corner here. I need to build this limit, f of x plus h minus f of x. So what I'm doing is I'm basically figuring out what goes in front of the subtraction within this numerator. So what is f of x plus h? So the x in the function I just replaced with a set of parentheses that contains x plus h. That gave me one little line of simplification I can do. I can distribute this to into that set of parentheses. And this is about as simple as we can make f of x plus h look. I'm gonna build the limit now. So I'm gonna take this answer that we got from the top line, I'm gonna put it prior to the subtraction within that numerator. I then need to subtract off f of x. Well, f of x is just the function that we're dealt. And then I need to divide by h, right? That's part of the definition. And I'm putting this all inside of a limit as h approaches zero. Now what will happen anytime you build this limit is if you put zero in place of the h's, you are always going to get zero divided by zero. That is an indeterminate form. That is something that we need to try to get past. Now, when you have this difference of two fractions within the numerator of this fraction, what typically is going to be beneficial to do is to find a common denominator between these two separate fractions so that you can write the difference of the two as a single fraction. So the easiest way to find a common denominator is just to multiply your two denominators together. So this first denominator is going to have to get multiplied by 2x minus 1, and I have to multiply by a form of the number 1. So this entire first fraction is going to have to get multiplied by 1 in the form of 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1. And then after the subtraction, the second fraction is going to have to get multiplied by a different form of the number 1. I would need to multiply by the initial denominator of the subtraction of the two fractions in order to create that common denominator. And again, top and bottom of that second fraction have to get multiplied by the same thing so that you're maintaining the same mathematical value for your expression. Now, a couple different things happened as I went from this line to this line, so I'll try to talk you through each of them. Uh, you do see I have the common denominator expressed right here. And then what I did is I distributed 2 into this numerator, right? When I multiply fractions, I just do top times top. So 2 distributed into this numerator is going to give me 4x minus 2. And then I attach this negative, the subtraction, I attached it to that 2, and I distributed this 2 into this numerator. But it was negative, keep in mind. So negative 2 times 2x got me negative 4x. Negative 2 times plus 2h got me negative 4h, negative 2 times negative 1 got me plus 2. Now within that numerator, check out what happens. This 4x at the beginning is going to cancel with this minus 4x in the middle. This minus 2 toward the front is going to cancel with the plus 2 at the end, right? Those like terms are all going to combine to 0. So the numerator just ends up becoming negative 4h. Now the other thing you'll notice I did here, rather than dividing this fraction by h, rather than continuing to write it as a fraction within a fraction, we'd call that a compound fraction, I decided to, rather than divide by h over 1, multiply by the reciprocal 1 over h. Why is that beneficial? Well, if you look at this line here, if I have negative 4 times h times 1 in my numerator, this set of parentheses times this set of parentheses times h in my denominator, I can cancel the common factors of h. Once I cancel those common factors of h, that's going to kind of key me in on the fact that, hey, I'm probably not going to get 0 over 0 any longer if I put 0 in place of any h's that remain. And if I do that, if I put 0 in place of the only h that's left, which is in this position within the denominator, I get negative 4 in my numerator, 2x, that's 0, so 2x minus 1 in that set of parentheses, 2x minus 1 in that set of parentheses. If you wanted to recognize that that denominator is a set of parentheses times itself, it can be re-represented as that set of parentheses squared. Here is the derivative. Yeah, you can get this derivative with the quotient rule or with the chain rule. At this point in your calculus course, you probably haven't learned those things yet. 
if you're required to use the definition and you're dealing with a rational function, this video should serve as a pretty good foundation for you to try to work through your other examples similar to it.